Hello guys, it's UK Gaming here, and what I have today is an interesting Kerbal Space Program playthrough. Now, usually the videos I've made in the past have been sort of mock-ups of historical rockets, and I decided to take that to a new level, because in this space program it's not just an average Kerbal Space Program, what it is, <laughs> is an international effort. Now this is kind of what would have happened if all the countries had come together and just helped each other make space possible instead of fighting against each other. Not trying to be a hippie, but what I did is I installed three mods for parts in this. I have a Russian parts mod, a American parts mod, and a British parts mod. Now to be fair, the British parts mod is pretty small, but I thought, you know, a bit of nationalism there. So basically I have this combination of all these different parts, if we, I just show you some of the parts that you can see, I've got the normal Kerbal Space Program stuff, but there there's like that, the Mercury Command Pod, and here I have inflatable bags, parachutes, what else, let's find something Russian. Some Russian engines up here, basically I have, what's here? some Russian engine stuff. I just basically have American parts, British parts and Russian parts and I just see how I can you know make them all fit and use Kerbal parts as well. But anyway let's start off. <sighs> now I'm gonna start this off with a sounding rocket and I'm gonna use the Explorer probe core. Now the Explorer was the first American satellite and the first satellite to gather scientific data from space. Sputnik was the first, but it didn't actually have any scientific experiments on board. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a single junior sergeant rocket and a couple of fins. Now the fins are a little bit peak in comparison to my rocket here, but they should be fine. And this will just get this rocket into the air high enough to gather some experiments. Alright, and let's go. So just a nice little solid rocket booster, a little sounding rocket here. And <laughs> I really wish I had some smaller fins, but those are the smallest ones available. Now this is a bit similar to what happened in real life with the space program. It all started off unmanned. And that's what I'm just achieving here, just a little sounding rocket, nothing that basic, cost almost nothing. Now in a couple of seconds the engine's going to burn out and you will have noticed I have no transmission gear or science equipment on this. I know you're probably wondering why. That's because the Explorer has its own onboard science experiments just like the real thing did. I'm going to keep that, extend the antenna, Uh, let's transmit the data and just get some basic Geiger counter data from the, from I'd say just about above the, a little bit lower pressure. So this isn't exactly going to be groundbreaking work, but I launch my first one vessel and I get some science experiments. So that's just a bit of money and science to get me started off. But I didn't bother with a parachute on this one, so it's going to run straight back into the ground. Okay, let's have a look what other contracts we have available. Let's go for Escape the Atmosphere and... Hmm, let's go for Orbit Kerbin. Those are two fairly good contracts to start us off with, and let's see what I can get with this 30 science we got. Alright, so we got some basic rocketry, some rocket engines and stuff like that. And... oh, we could get the Mercury Command Pod and the Geiger counter. Hmm. Now I'm going to go with basic rocketry because what I'm going to try and do is before I launch a man into space I'm going to just launch an unmanned probe. Hmm. Let's see what else we have. Let's get the Mercury capsule anyway. Hmm. You know, for 20 science, this is quite a lot of parts. This is a 
got uh, some N1 parts here. Well, we even get the Salute stations. <laughs> Part of Sputnik. Well, we, you know what? This is all definitely worth 20 science. That is a lot of parts. Look at all those Russian parts for 20 science. I'll take that. Now, I would launch a manned mission, but I don't have Drogue parachutes yet. And for anyone who's ever, anyone who's launched in the new state that Kerbal Space Program's in knows that if you don't have a Drogue parachute, you're probably screwed. So I'm going to try sending up another sounding rocket, but a little bit unusual this time. You have to wait and see what I come up with. Now what I have here is a bit of a mishmash of different parts. What I have for the top is the Explorer probe again. I have a Russian built solid rocket booster and I have a tank from the Black Arrow which is a British satellite stage and I have a Mercury engine on the bottom. Now what this is supposed to represent is the bumper rocket. Now the bumper rocket was the first two-stage rocket of all successful two-stage rocket. Now you can look up a bit more about them if you like and they are pretty interesting but basically it was the first rocket to reach space. So I thought it was a good place to start when I'm with me trying to reach space. So let's give it a go. Now I might have overpowered it. I don't know whether the first stage will carry me to space or not. If it does I'll just get a higher or a higher peak altitude. Oh, here we go, that Mercury engine giving us a nice kick. Oh, bloody. Uh, not really sure what I did wrong there. this now. Now I'm not really sure what happened there. I think it might have been because I had the fins on the top. And having fins on the very top of the rocket can cause problems. I didn't think about that. But anyway, we're getting some good altitude and I'm not sure whether we're actually going to need this second stage, but we have it anyway. Oh, we're a oh, bit roll down before I burn up. Obviously it's a lot harder to get into space in real life than it is in Kerbal Space Program, so I have a much bigger rocket than I need. But that doesn't matter, that just means I can go further into space. Accelerate up and fire the second stage. And I'm not going to get an orbit curve and obviously in this one but I am definitely in space and I have fuel to spare. Now because the Earth is a lot bigger than Kerbin, the bumper just about made it into space in their eight launches. It was actually pretty revolutionary stuff. Two sta staging rockets is not the norm these days but back in the day it was really unusual. Now this is Wow, I'm going to be going really high on this flight, so basically I don't want to run out of electricity, so I'm just going to turn off SAS, try and save power and get as high as I can. And there we go. Now I'm going to get some science from high of a carbon. Let's activate. And 15 science. Not too bad. Let's see, is there anything else we can get? Let's review data and let's transmit that back.
And there we go, that is the first rocket into space. So, as you can see, it's all going to be a bit of a mishmash between Kerbal parts, Russian parts, American parts, and British parts, but I'm going to try and use it all the parts together to try and make a unique Kerbal Space Program experience for you guys, not just another guy with stock parts. I could have gone for realism overhaul, but I'm not quite as good with realism overhaul yet, so I've stuck with what I'm good at. But anyway, this thing's about to be entered, and I doubt it will survive the re-entry, but even if it does, it's going to come smashing to the ground. But anyway, that's all for this episode. I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching me. Oh! <laughs> you know, trying this unique style of Kerbal Space Program, just playing with all different parts from around the world. But anyway, the next episode, I'm going to try and orbit the Earth and try and get these Kerbals into space. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's been UK Gaming.